Chapter 3. Molly. A sigh escapes my lips as I pull into the parking lot. Dylan stands in front of our door with a box in his hand. What do you want, Dylan? I hope he will just get out of my way, but he moves to block my entrance. I want to apologize, and I've brought you a peace offering. He holds the box out and smiles as if that will erase the years and past hurt. Great, apology accepted, I say, and push behind him to open the door. Don't you even want to know what's in it? He asks. There is a trace of hurt in his voice. Fine, I sigh and turn back to him, trying hard not to roll my eyes. He opens the cover of the box and I almost burst out laughing. Inside are a dozen chocolate cupcakes. It is a checkerboard of white and brown frosting, dotted with some red cherries and colorful sprinkles. Please tell me you still like chocolate, Smalls. Smalls, his nickname for me. At the sound of the word, my heart warms a little. Just a little, though. Chocolate and a nickname even one that always made me feel special, still don't make up for the past. Yet. But it is obvious he is trying, so I decide to cut the guy a little slack. I do still eat chocolate, I say with a slight smile. Good, because I have more coming, and I'd like to take you to dinner tonight, anywhere you'd like, or I'll cook for you. Our restaurant isn't finished yet, of course, but I'd be happy to cook for you at your place, or mine, The words tumble out of his mouth like rapid-fire bullets, and I can't help but smile at him. Fine, dinner, but I'm not promising this gets you off the hook. He nods, the corners of his mouth twitching as if he's trying to hold back the smile. I understand. Shall I pick you up here, or what? Yeah, here is fine. I get off at six. We can decide what to do for dinner after that. Sounds good. He hands me the box and turns to go, but before he enters the door of his restaurant, he pauses. I'm looking forward to it. I wish I could say I wasn't, but for all my bravada and tough exterior, I still have a soft spot for Dylan and find that I'm looking forward to it as well. The coffee shop is still dark as I enter, and I wonder briefly where Kirsten is. Normally here at the crack of dawn, I wonder if her night with Tristan ran long. I pull out one of the cupcakes to munch on as I prep for the morning rush. Even though I'm not really hungry, as I didn't skip breakfast, chocolate is a weakness of mine, and I know these cupcakes won't taste fresh much longer. Might as well try a few before they go stale. Dylan Did you get your package delivered? Tristan asks as I enter the restaurant. Yes, she didn't want to take them at first, but I got her to, and she agreed to dinner tonight. We really need to get this restaurant open, though, because I have no idea where to take her in town. I'm not sure either, Tristan says, but I could ask Kirsten. I'll probably just offer to cook for her, but yeah, go ahead and ask. I glance around the room to see what we need to tackle today. It appears to be more flooring. We managed to get about a quarter of it done yesterday, but there's still a lot of floor left. You ready to tackle the rest of this? Tristan's lips twist into a smirk. Need to get your mind off her, huh? Six o'clock is a long way away, I say. It might go a little faster if we get some work done instead of yakking away. All right. Tristan holds up his hands in surrender and shakes his head. I get it. Been there and done that. Let's finish some flooring then. After a few minutes, we find a groove, and the floor seems to lay itself. When we place the final piece, we both stand and survey the room. It's amazing how different it looks. There's still a lot of work to be done, but with a new floor, it looks more finished than it is. We take a short break for lunch and then move on to the next project. Though I can't say time flies, it definitely feels faster keeping my mind on the work. When I notice the light in the room shift, I chance a glance at my watch. It's just after five. Hey, how about we call it a day today? I'd like to clean up before picking up Molly. 
Sweat dots my t-shirt, causing parts to cling to my arms and abs. Though I love the feeling of physical labor, I'd prefer not to be sweaty when I see Molly again. Tristan regards his watch. Yeah, okay, I wouldn't mind cleaning up either. We perform a quick cleanup, putting the tools back where they belong and removing any small pieces of flooring that weren't used, and then we are on our way back to the apartment. As I peel off my clothes and step under the warm water, I can't help but feel the nerves tightening in my stomach. Molly has given me a second chance, but she might not give me a third. This night has to go perfectly.